So here's some sword and scale for you. And Tim, I actually talked to him. Um, and he's a very interesting character. Um, not in a negative way. Just uh, when I reached out to him, very you know, way, I, I saw, again, on these groups, people just attacking his name. And I was, you know, so I wanted to reach out and, you know, ask how he was doing. Um, and he was very heartfelt about what he had to say about her. I mean, you know, if people were like, well, he must have done something because he made a huge donation on the GoFundMe. And when I talked to him, he said, Give the money, I don't make you a bad was, But it's all don't the money I have. Either. And, you know, just talking about, you know, he wrote a song that he wanted to play at her memorial. I mean, he was genuinely a heartfelt character and, you know, really cared about this girl. And, again, you just have people speculating, throwing their name under the bus, and trying to point a finger without even knowing a person, without even taking the time to just say, hey, how are you doing? And <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah. Problem is, Yo, Tim is Beeson Tim? wasn't made homeless. It he is, wasn't it stuck out Mike being Boudet. homeless, I just, being uh, assaulted you a few minutes ago. he didn't do. Yeah. First of all, I have, to, I have to say to you, I'm very house. sorry for your loss. I don't know anything about you or how close you were with Natalie, uh, but I know that you did know her, so I uh, have to say that I'm I'm very sorry for, for your loss right now. Now, I'm waiting on the part where he talks about how pissed Thank off you. he is uh, about the address as well. I was, uh, I was actually pretty close to Natalie. I dated yeah, her have been for fucking a while. her since she was 14. Uh, after a while, we... She had moved back to Colorado after we had dated, and uh, a few months ago we started kind of talking again, and uh, then one day she went missing. How, how long ago was it when you guys were dating? Uh, I'd say about a year ago. Was she dating anybody in between, like after, after you? Um... She had dated Justin Ward. After she dated me, she dated some dude out in Virginia for a little while. Then uh, split with him and moved back out here. And started talking to me again. And then stopped talking to me for about a year. And then, and during that time, was it was with someone out here as far as I know. Do you know that person's name? Um, the last I had heard, she was with a dude named Joey. Okay, Joey that's Marino, what I the guy he tried but blaming for the she, shit he uh, did. The only time she really mentioned Joey to me was that he had held on to a dog for her, and that was all the more he came up in conversation. She wasn't dating him when she went missing, was she? Um, I think she may have been. Do you do you know anything about what's going on with this case? Do you know if if this Joey person has uh, emerged anywhere? Has anybody heard of from him? Um, I have, I, nobody has heard or seen him, heard from or seen him. Uh, he just kind of disappeared. But, uh, as far as with the case, the, the day that she went missing, Joey had called me off of her phone. Because uh, earlier that day, uh, she and I were texting because it was a warm, it was a fairly warm day out in the middle of winter in Colorado, um, you know. And she likes to ride motorcycles. I happen to have motorcycles. She's having a rough time with her stalker problems and everything. And she told me she Except I wasn't stalking her. I was trying to get her to stop the well, fucking bullshit. Uh, I can't help you move or anything. I can't afford that, but I can take you out on a motorcycle ride. Would you want to go Friday? And I said, because it's supposed to be a little warm. She says, well, can we go today? Which would have been a Thursday. And I said, yeah, sure. You just got to grab a coat. She says, okay, let me get a few things taken care of first, and I'll let you know when I'm ready to go. Okay. A few hours rolls by. I'd gone out and ridden a little bit, you know, just to be ready to go whenever she would call. And uh, it got a little too cold to be out riding, so I went home. And then a few hours after 
I had gotten home, her boyfriend, her current boyfriend that she was with when she went missing, called me off of her phone. Yep. What did he say? And she was shot with his gun, too. Um, he asked if Natalie was with me. Um, and I told him no. He said if we were supposed to go on a ride, but I never heard back from him. And he goes, well, I can't find her. She's missing, and so is my gun. So is my what? Hit his gun. It's firearm. And I said, what do you mean she's missing? Because her phone is at the house. She is not at the house, and neither is my gun. He goes, and I don't. He goes, and it's not like Natalie to just leave her phone somewhere. That's, that's not something she does. And I said, right. That, because it's true, she didn't leave her phone anywhere under any circumstance. You know, she's a teenage girl. Things glued to her hand. Yeah. She was 19. And, uh, then he hung up. I didn't get any responses from anybody until another couple hours later when her twin sister called me and was freaking out because her sister's missing. And it, she had no idea. Her sister went to Boulder and was treating homeless to people like shit. There and ask if I had seen her. During this call, Natalie's twin sister, Alicia, informs Tim Beeson that she knew he was talking to Natalie again. According to Tim, she made it sound like nobody else really knew. There's Natalie a reason hadn't for really that. told anyone that they were talking. He was but Tim Beeson says thought. the reason they were talking was because of Sean. The reason we had started talking. And that's the part that's the scariest part. I was trying to get a one on one conversation or even the police to come sit down with us. Huh. For a restraining order, for the protection order. It's because when he when he first had become a problem, I was with her. I was dating her at that time. And he had been and see, a I'd been trying to get help too. A while before she and I had started dating at that time. And where did you first hear about this Sean I character and how did that happen? For a second. We were, I don't know, we'd probably been dating for a month, maybe two months. And uh, she shot me a message. She goes, babe, she goes, you need to know about. All right. So the major issue that I was having is that I was trying to get help. If I asked for help nicely, people fucking ignored me. They kept on telling me those pretty goddamn words. You just gotta love yourself. And I'm trying to be as tactful as I can. Because I'm not wanting to spread this rumor further. I'm trying to get it fucking nipped in the bud. Meanwhile, she did everything that she could to make sure that didn't happen. Because she didn't want the heroin thing coming out. And that was so fucked up. Because, like... I just want this shit to stop. I want to be able to go see my loved ones without putting up with this bullshit. I've already tried to get Ryan to come see me in person so that I can talk to him. I've already tried to get Pierre to keep his word. But no, three days and then he fucking gets back to me and he's a fucking asshole about it. And he's not the only one. I mean, this was a major fucking issue. And she didn't realize that one little white lie in Virginia would destroy a man's life so completely. And then you've got this sword and scale dude who's very one-sided, very biased. He tries to make Tim Beach Boy Beeson here, who is a bitch boy, sound like he's some sort of good guy. I mean, this guy fucking literally was fucking a 14-year-old girl. You know, that's when they started dating. If you look back on uh, Natalie's YouTube, yeah, it starts years ago. Years ago. You look at the one titled uh, Tim. The oldest one at, at the point that this was made was like five years old. She was 19. What's well, 19 minus five? Yeah, that's how old Natalie was when Tim Beeson started fucking her. All right, now let's continue this. That's the thing, is that I needed help, too. This could have all been reasonably dealt with, with a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Natalie, hear me out, please. For the love of fucking God, hear me out. But she wasn't interested in that. She was interested in playing victim and treating me like shit. Same thing with Maddie Boa. Same thing with Alicia Bollinger. They didn't realize that people like Tim 
are fucking dangerous people who are going to go out of their way to treat innocent men like shit over the wrong fucking words. And I needed an honest fucking day in court to clear this fucking shit up. But that never happened. I never got an honest day in court. Now let's press play again. If I can get this phone unlocked. This because this dude is, is freaking me out. I was freaked I said, out. I'm okay, being well, fucking assaulted and threatened. She was this guy I met a while back. He was a homeless guy. I started talking to him, yada yada. I felt bad for him. I wanted to help him. And now he won't leave me alone. Tim actually sent me some of the screenshots. And I wouldn't leave her alone. I wouldn't. I tried going to the cops. I tried going to her. I tried going to Joanna Taylor. I tried going to uh, Derek Parrish. I mean, literally trying to get someone to even listen was impossible. But you know what? If I was an asshole to people... They kind of responded, and it fucking sucked for me because I was trying to be nice about the whole situation. But being called a meth head, right? This is so fucked up because I don't do meth. There's a meth dealer named George Helmstetter in Boulder, Colorado, and he'll tell you I don't do meth. So I was being judged by slander by others, and at no point in time was I allowed to defend myself. I couldn't get anyone to actually help. If I was too pushy, they got fucking snappy with me, and, well, with me, it's peaches. That happened a couple of times. That first time that we had a conversation, a bear interrupted it. But after that, I was pissed off, and I was fucking yelling at her for, not literally yelling at her, it was in fucking typing, but like, yeah, you're acting like a bear. Stop this fucking pretty words bullshit and find out what the fuck is going on, Peaches. Is Peaches a bad person? No, not even close. She's a wonderful person. Mandy Hughes is a wonderful person. That's not a joke. Candace Fairley is a wonderful person. Tabitha Michelle Cook is a wonderful person. The problem is that I needed actual help and I kept getting pretty words. Like, these people are going to do bad shit to me if I can't get someone to go in with me. I needed someone to go in with me in January. You know, I needed someone to actually go in with me so that the police wouldn't do the same bullshit that they did. They did the things that I was scared of them doing, things that I had seen them do a hundred times before to other people. And so I knew what to be afraid of. I knew what to be afraid of with the police. But it didn't matter. Now, later on in this Sword and Scale episode, I've never made it through the whole goddamn thing. The Officer Ryan, the one that was from Broomfield who was supposed to talk to me. Officer Ryan's in here, right? And he's talking about some fucking bridge bullshit, which could have been any number of things. At that point in time, I'd been hit in the head a fucking ton. And, um, like, I've had people tell me, you know, they're being threatened to be creaked. People were going to throw them over a bridge. People were threatening to throw me over the bridge. People were threatening to throw me in the creek and threatening to creek me and calling me a fucking murderer and all sorts of fucked up shit. I'm like, guys, just knock it the fuck off. Leave me alone. You know, and at this point, I'm still trying to help them find the guy who fucking killed Natalie. I'm pretty sure it's Tim Beeson or Ted Bollinger at this point, given their history. They're violent men. I mean, Tim Beeson was threatening my life well before I ever threatened to even blow my head off in front of Natalie. I started off, the very first person I threatened to blow my head off... And I didn't actually threaten to. I said I wanted to. But you guys go ahead and interpret it however you want. Because that's what you do. You're illiterate as all fuck. But I mean, I'm, I'm fucking overwhelmed with this shit. You know, I'm trying to get over this. I need to be able to see my friends and family and my loved ones. And like, I'm trying to keep this on the down low. Because of the fucking sensitive nature of what's being said. 
And then I got Tim Beeson getting a hold of me, accusing me of being a meth head too. And then he's also being a fucking dickhead, calling me a chimo and all sorts of other shit. Like, fuck you, Tim. Leave me the fuck alone. But the other thing about Tim harassing me the way that he was is I couldn't take screenshots of that. I had no fucking clue how. Or I'd have just sent those goddamn screenshots to Natalie and said, Hey, see this shit? I've been dealing with this for a whole fucking year, Natalie. Just call off the fucking dogs. With Joanna Taylor, she was supposed to set it up so that me and her and Maddie could sit down and have coffee. Does that sound like I'm trying to hurt people? No, I'm trying to get the fucking problem resolved because the cops aren't doing a goddamn thing. They don't give a fuck. They're telling me I need to man up and they have real fucking police work to do and so on and fucking so forth. We'll press play again. Of text conversations between himself and Natalie about Sean stalking her. They seem legitimate and there's no reason to doubt they aren't. And he's texting me all kinds of crazy shit. All right, so I didn't start texting him crazy shit. He started texting me crazy shit. If you look at the uh, stuff that I sent Natalie's mother on the 9th of December of 2017, I was explaining to her what was going on and asking her to put a stop to it. I didn't want to have to expose these people. I wanted people to leave me the fuck alone. Natalie wanted me to leave her alone, but her friends would not leave me alone. I needed Natalie to tell her friends the truth and get them to fucking leave me alone. It was fucking insane. But the other thing is, I have the text from uh, me and Maddie Boa that show, number one, we planned the trip. Number two, she was on probation because of, her, or because of methamphetamines. Number three... I mean, seriously, dude, this is the most fucked up shit. And it, when it got to the point where I couldn't just keep it quiet, which was the beginning of fucking December, I'm like, you know what? I got to just come out with everything, fucking explain to everybody what the fuck is going on, why it is that I'm going so fucking goddamn crazy. And it just fucked. Nobody would listen. So, uh, Tim Beeson got a hold of me first. Now, this guy right here, Mike Boudette, he's saying, there's no reason to believe that it isn't. So, he's trying to automatically say that Tim Beeson's stuff is 100% genuine. He doesn't know how to check that shit. And then, Danica Garner, she verified the email from Miss Natalie. Verified it. Said, yes, that's Natalie's email address, and that's why I'm talking to you. But if you look at what I'm saying to her, if you look at what I'm saying to Natalie, I'm not asking where the fuck she's even at. She's in Virginia so far as I know. I mean, when she blindsided me with the, hey, you know, I'll come see you, I'm like, holy fuck, she's in Colorado? I don't even want to fucking be here. I'm fucking scared shitless of this little girl because people are doing evil shit over her just using the word stalker. No, I don't want to fucking meet her anywhere except the cop shop. And I sure as hell don't want to meet her at the Starbucks on Pearl Street. I have so many fucking pleasant memories, wonderful memories at that Starbucks. But that whole situation with Devin Cockerill was, oh my God. And, you know, I admitted the things that I got wrong in that situation. But at the same time, Devin kept on saying, yeah, I'll talk to you, I'll talk to you, I'll talk to you. And over time, you know, I'm like, I'm having a severe fucking panic attack the longer this goes on. You know, just realize that I'm a human being. I'm not after your fucking pussy. I just understand that this, this has been my home for years. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm fucking overwhelmed. The cops are harassing me every night. I can't get any goddamn sleep. My back is so fucked up I can't even work. And I got Veronica Randall being a fucking evil bitch to me, so I dropped her off like a bad habit. I'm not going to fucking deal with being treated like that. The sad fact is... When I tried to be nice, when I tried to gently and kindly approach the situation, I was met with a whole bunch of fucking shit. So I started giving that shit back. 
Tim Beeson got a hold of me specifically to threaten me. Don't fucking threaten me, dude. Seriously, I'm trying to get Natalie to call off the fucking dogs, and they're not down. And that's the fucked up part. That's the reason that I exposed her with for her fucking heroin. I did that before I ever exposed uh, Ted Bollinger or Tim Beeson. That was quite a while earlier. I'm trying to let her know what's going on, and she's being fucking cruel to me. I'm like, just call off the fucking dogs, Jesus Christ. Give the cops my goddamn number. Meet me at the fucking police station. Does that sound like I'm trying to harm her? So we'll press play again. I want him to go away. I want him to leave me alone. I wanted to leave her alone, too. I drove 1,700 miles to get the fuck away from this stupid bitch. Like, holy shit. So, me being the boyfriend is not too particularly fond of someone harassing my girlfriend. Except I'm not harassing her. I'm begging her to call off the goddamn dogs. I WANT THESE PEOPLE TO LEAVE ME THE FUCK ALONE! Or any girlfriend like that, I hit him up. HE TALKED TO HER THAT WAY! HE DIDN'T JUST TALK TO HER THAT WAY, HE PHYSICALLY FUCKING ABUSED HER! I said, hey partner, you need to, you need to back the fuck off. Hey partner is not how he started. You can't, you can't treat girls like this. Uh, I don't. This dude held her down and streamed in her face when she went to go get her fucking dog from him. Or what your problem is, you can't. She's asking to leave her alone, and you should respect that. I'm asking her to call off the dog. She should fucking respect that. I'm being harmed because she fucking lied. She called me a fucking stalker. Honestly, I can't say that. I cannot say that Natalie Marie Bollinger called me a stalker in Virginia. I can't. I don't know who it was that called me a stalker in Virginia. I do know that when I was leaving Virginia, and I tried to explain to Maddie Bo the situation, like, hey, dude, she's fucking still on heroin, all right? They fucking gave me a busted-ass phone. It's not fucking working. And I'm trying to explain this to Maddie, and she's like, I don't care, you're just making excuses for your bad behavior, blah, blah, fucking blah. I'm like, oh my god! That is not the goddamn situation. But she didn't care. Now, there's some other screenshots that uh, Sword and Scale has from uh, uh, Candace Bondurant. Just like everybody else, they only post up the parts that make it look like I'm the bad guy. They don't bother to show the situation that led up to that shit. The worst part is, instead of talking to me like a human being, Candace wanted to text shit at me, fucking shit that she knew was fucking bullshit, and then instead of talking to me like a human being, after pretending like she cares about me, she's posting this shit all over the internet. I posted shit up all over the internet because people would not talk to me like fucking adults. We could not hash this out like fucking adults. I'm being assaulted. I can't see my loved ones. Obviously, I'm going to fucking freak out. Then he turned his attention from her to start to post a bunch of shit about me. And you goddamn right I did. I mean, this is not the first dude to fucking threaten me over the goddamn situation. This right here is exactly why I'm trying to get a hold of the fucking cops. But did they post up the text between Tim and I? Did they do that? No, I did that. And when I was trying to show that to Mike Boudet on Sword and Scale, oh yeah, he was not having it. Harassing me. Which... I mean, fine, harass me. It wasn't harassment. He harassed me. And I was being very vocal about it because I needed people to know what the fuck was going on. 
This shit that I am fucking dealing with. And here's Natalie Bollinger. She's with the dude who stole her dog, held her down, and was streaming in her face. I'm being abused. I need help. I needed help before Natalie was fucking killed. I went all the way to Boulder, down federal, because she wanted to stop all the crazy. She didn't even know the fucking crazy that was going on, because she was so busy being a bitch and cutting me the fuck off. Calling me a meth head and fucked up shit like that. Like, no, I'm not on fucking meth. But at no point in time did Natalie Marie Bollinger ever call me a fucking child molester. But Tim sure as fuck did. We'll press play again. We sure leave her alone. I, I'll just ignore you. It doesn't bother me any. But he He wasn't ignoring me. He was threatening my life. Then he was persistent. And then after a while, he stopped. He just kind of disappeared. He stopped posting about her. He, he started posting about a bunch of other crazy stuff. But he... Crazy stuff? No, the stuff that I was posting about is literally the stuff that I had to deal with and Sammy Leon Lawrence IV had to deal with and Zade Atkinson had to deal with and Michelle Rodriguez had to deal with and hundreds of others that I personally know had to deal with. I'm posting up how the fuck it is when you don't live in a goddamn house, when you don't have family support. He left the both of us alone for a while. Eventually, Natalie and Tim break up, but they remain close friends. We ended up having our our disagreements because the, she's wanted to live a lifestyle that I've already lived through and didn't want to be a part of. That's you right. Know, he I'm was doing I, heroin with her when he met her at the age of fourteen. Person, you know. What do you mean? So by that? I, um, she's she. At that time, she liked to party and stuff, and and I'm I'm not much a partier anymore. I I found myself in a lot of bad situations because of it, so I I tend to stray away from parties. But that was something she wanted to do. You know, she liked to go and 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 go drinking with her friends and all this, and that's just not necessarily my thing. Drugs it could have been, and he you know, knew she did, that she was on heroin and meth. That she had used drugs and whatever. And we had talked about it. Um, they dung them together. I was never necessarily under the impression that she was like wildly like doing drugs or anything like that. Oh yeah, she it was wildly doing her personality. it. She was she, addicted. You know, she's more the kind of person that I could see sitting back and eating a handful of mushrooms and giggling her ass off. You know. But no, she was a thing. meth head. She was addicted to so meth I, and addicted I never really to heroin. Edgar's having too much of a problem with it, but at the same time. That's not something that I want around my life or whatever. And, and she, she and I ended up having disagreements about the way that we wanted to do stuff. So we parted ways. Yeah. And I didn't, you know, and I stopped talking to her. I kind of just left her be. And then one day out of the blue, I got a message from her. She had gotten a hold of me and said, hey, uh, Sean's back. And he's like he's causing a problem I need to get a restraining order at this point and I'm trying to get a restraining order against Tim okay, Bitch Boy well, Beeson can I do how can I help she goes well do you have any of these messages from this time or any of these messages and I said I can look but I, I didn't figure that I would need them uh -huh. and she was well yeah I didn't either but now he's like he he's following me and shit and like he's and that's the thing i was not following things. her i didn't even know she was in the fucking state of colorado i had no fucking clue she was in the state of colorado i want to see the part where she says that i'm following her i want to see that i'm living at ken and leah's in their fucking garage ken and leah are ripping me the fuck off i'm trying to get all of these people to understand that I am being treated like a fucking child molester. 
And they're blowing me off like it's no big fucking thing. They all get to see their friends and family. Their slander did not stop them from being able to see their friends and family. Their slander did not get them assaulted for trying to see their friends and family. Their slander did not have Tim, the bitch boy fucking Beeson, threatening their goddamn lives. He's not just posting things about me. He's posting things about you and he's like getting on my dad's page and posting. That's right. I was posting about Tim because he had threatened my goddamn life. He was one of many. I was being treated like a child molester. Meanwhile, she told me her dad was a child molester. She sent me an email about it. Now listen to this about my dad on his Facebook and stuff like that. Um, I told you. I told her that I would fucking retaliate if she didn't come forward with the truth, and I fucking meant it. Nobody deserves this shit. Like, whoa, okay, yeah, give me a second. I'll, I'll, I'll look. And we went through, and, and she did eventually get everything she needed to get the protection on her. Meanwhile, I've got no fucking help. If I ask nicely, I get blown off. I get pretty fucking words. You know? And if I'm pushy, then I get treated like shit and people block me and throw me the fuck away. I'm like, I have no fucking clue how to explain to you guys what the fuck is going on. I am overwhelmed. I need help. I need help. But on this protection order with this thing, the way that they did it was that she had to find a way to serve Sean herself. She had to get... Which is fucked up. So fucked up. She shouldn't have to serve me herself. But it shouldn't have gotten that far to begin with. A simple fucking phone call would have fucking remedied this shit. A simple phone call. Dude, I am being treated like shit for things that I didn't do to you, Natalie. Fucking tell these people to stop. Call off the fucking dogs. Someone herself to serve Sean. That's insanity. And have a witness. Yes. Right? It is insanity. Oh, and have a witness. Who, what, what, who tells a victim of stalking that they have to serve? She's not a victim of stalking! Her and Tim and Maddie and fucking Katie Whiteman and fucking so many people. They're stalking my Facebook for her. I'm trying to get this shit to fucking stop. I am trying my best to get this shit to stop without further spreading these goddamn rumors because, see, here's the thing. As soon as these rumors started, I knew what the fuck was coming next. I've seen this shit happen to others. It's even worse when you're homeless. But see, Tim, after Natalie disappeared, he was still in a house. All of these people are still in houses while I am made homeless by this situation. I need Miss Peaches to help. I need just one more night, just long enough to show the police what the fuck is going on. They ask for specific information, and I'm trying to get them that specific information, but I need a safe place to fucking do it. They're, they're, they're predator. Yeah. And then, and here's the even more fucked up part. They put her address on the paperwork that he was served. They gave her, him her location. What the hell? And see, that's the most fucked up part right there. This sword and scale episode was specifically Sean Biased. Just like the rest of the internet. That's what happens when you slander somebody's name the way that she fucking did. Just the word stalker 
was enough for all of this shit all the way down the line to happen. Meanwhile, I'm begging for fucking help. I'm fucking suicidal over this shit. I'm trying to trade my car for enough pills to fucking kill myself. And I'm begging everybody that I know to shoot me in the fucking head. Well, they're telling me pretty words. I've got copies of that shit in text format. This is when Natalie texts Sean and agrees to see him. Immediately after he was given the protection order, because she was freaked out about having to give it to him. So I said, you know what you do? I said, you arrange to meet him, but you don't. And that's the fucked up thing. I had been trying to get her to meet with me and the cops over the phone. Hey, give the fucking cops my number. I am not afraid of the cops. What I am afraid of is that I am never going to get an end to this. I'm never going to get to see my loved ones. Because you won't fucking come forward and tell the truth. She never once in any of this said that I was a fucking child molester or a fucking rapist. Not even once. And you can see on that fucking post that she made on the 13th where she fucking slandered the shit out of my name. This is just one day after I exposed her dad. All right? Just one day after I exposed her dad. And the shit that she put on the fucking protection order. Oh, my God. It was fucking bullshit. And Alicia Bollinger fucking knows it. Go there yourself. You send an officer in there to serve it to him. And she right? The problem is, that officer didn't give a fuck. He was one of many officers who did not want to take a fucking report from me because I was pegged as the goddamn predator. I've got people assaulting me. I can't go see my loved ones. And they're calling me a fucking stalker. A whole fucking group of them. Obviously. I'm begging for fucking help from everybody that I know. Fucking help me, please. Make it stop. It was like, that's, she says, that's a great idea. She goes, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. She says... Uh, that same day, she goes, he's still texting me. He's, he's like posting about me and stuff. And it says on the... Except that I was not texting her. This is Tim Bitch Boy Beeson outright lying on sword and scale. Outright lying, first of all. Second of all, the address that was on there. It wasn't Natalie's. It was her grandparents, according to Danica. The problem is, because of this man's slander, this had more people coming after me. More people coming after me. Over things that I didn't choose. I didn't choose for Tim the Bitch Boy Beeson to lie outright so many times. And I should have been allowed a goddamn day in court to prove this. I needed that help. The help that Natalie had, I needed. I needed the police's help. But the police wouldn't help me. They'd only help her. I needed my friend's help. She had her friends to help. I didn't. I've been trying to get help for a whole goddamn year by this point. And him saying that it was Natalie's address on there, there should have been no address on there. That magistrate, I was trying to take to court over that right there, that exact fucking reason. That should not have been on that fucking paperwork. It was legally against the law for that to be on the paperwork. And that magistrate should have taken a fucking look. He was negligent for not doing so. And his negligence led to people assuming that I killed Natalie. Assuming that I was stalking Natalie. I didn't even know she was in fucking Colorado. Paperwork. 
paperwork that he's like supposed to leave me alone and yada yada. So and she goes, what do I do? And I said, well, you contact the police. This, this Except that in between when I was given the protection order and when she disappeared, I texted her zero fucking times. This is their job. This is where they're supposed to be stepping in and, you know, doing the, the, the cop thing. Except they're not doing their job. Okay, yeah. And she gets, I guess, got a hold of them, and they went out and they talked to them. And then a couple of days later... Except they literally never talked to me. They fucking lied outright. They never made any attempt to contact me. None. This slander right here. She shoots me a message, and I can send, I'll send you screenshots of this too, um, where her, of her telling me that Sean is texting her that he's like right the fuck by her house. And now I want to see those. I do. I'm not anywhere near her fucking house so far as I know. At this point, I'm pissed off because she was able to get a fucking protection order all the way from fucking Virginia. And I can't get an officer to even stop and listen to me. Not in Chapel, Nebraska. Not in Boulder, Colorado. She's, and she was freaking out because he's 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 messaging her and letting her know, like, hey, I know where you live and, like, I'm not far away. Except that never happened. I stopped texting her when I got handed the protection order. I was pissed off. I'd never had a protection order before. I had no fucking clue how they worked. This is the very same magistrate. The magistrate who allowed that on her paperwork should not have done that. He was criminally negligent in that fact. He could have put Natalie and her family at risk had I been an actual fucking predator. Natalie should not have had to deal with this, and neither should I. At every point in time, I was trying to be a fucking adult about it. While I'm having my name slandered further by these fucking goddamn wingnuts. While I'm being called a meth head by somebody who's on meth. Who's addicted to heroin. I'm sure you've gone over the Facebook. Um, uh, and the whole, this one person in particular. Yes. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that um, to us? What do you know if there's... And then there's Candace Bondurant. She didn't bother with posting up. See, she wanted to protect her lies. Candace is a chronic liar. Not chronic as in she's nonstop lying, but if she feels as if it'll be some sort of emotional barrier, she's going to lie about it. Like when she had said that she couldn't have me at her house because her ex didn't feel comfortable having other men at the house with her children. So I had to leave. When I was in Virginia, me and Candace parted ways because she let me know that she had lied to me. In Virginia, she said, you know what? I kicked you out because you quit your job. I didn't quit my job. I was fired. I was fired because of heart issues. And it's fucked up. Most of the time, my heart's healthy as a fucking ox. Matter of fact, that heart issue, I was staying at Candace's when I was supposed to go see Natalie and Alicia. And you know what? I went down there like I told them I would. I went down there to Denver. Aunt B had her niece and her niece's boyfriend drive me down to Denver because Maddie, Natalie, and Alicia wanted to see me before they got on the fucking airplane. Natalie called me crying, telling me that she's not getting on the plane unless I promise to come see her. It was fucking crazy, and it's still fucking crazy. 
because that magistrate should have never been allowed to prevent me from going to court. I was a fucking human being, goddammit. And I got screenshots between me and Matty Boa. I got screenshots between me and Tim Beeson. I got screenshots between me and Candace. The problem is, by the time I took those screenshots between me and Candace, I had so many screenshots in my fucking phone that it was full. I had to delete them in order to save that one. And it's so fucked up, because that right there is the reason that my GoFundMe's disappeared. I didn't know how to do any of that shit. I needed someone to show me how to do it. I'd been trying to do that shit, and it wasn't working. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. And this is the shit that I gotta fucking deal with. Now, later on in this, he talks about the, uh, the email from Natalie. The one that I exposed Ted with. And then, you know, of course, this Mike Boudet feller, who's already got a set against me, you can tell by the way that he talks about that. Well, you know, with Tim, it's we have no reason to doubt it. But then with me, yeah, it's and we don't know how to verify it or some fucking bullshit like that. Like, no. That's why I needed an honest fucking day in court. Because I was fucking judged by slander. I was slandered by Mike Boudet. I was slandered by Tim Beeson. I was slandered by the entire fucking Bollinger family. Meanwhile, Candace Bondurant, me and her, after I left her place, she was supposed to send everything that she could to Miss Jerry. That's what I asked Candace to do. It wasn't until I got out of Clearview, after her letting me know that Officer Michael Beard had gone to her house when she was taking her kids to school, and then gone to her work. And then after he went to her work, her landlord threatened to kick her and her fucking kids out in the fucking January snow. It was colder than a cast iron commode on the shady side of a fucking iceberg. Yeah, this slander is the reason that people hated me. This is the reason that people went out of their way not to help. This is the reason that people wanted to hide who they are. This is the reason they didn't want to come forward. It's because these people framed me for shit that I didn't fucking do. I wasn't going anywhere near her fucking house so far as I knew. The straightest shot between Hampton and Miss Peach's house, because Ken and Leah live on South Zunai right next to fucking Hampton. The straightest shot between Hampton and 120th from Ken and Leah's house is where? South Zunai. And Miss Peaches at the time lived on Melody and 120th. I walked a very long way. I was literally using a cane the day that she said that she wanted to stop all the crazy. I was so fucking excited. Finally, instead of being treated like shit and being slandered and being fucking slammed and assaulted, finally... She's going to fucking help put a stop to all this fucking crazy bullshit. Like fucking Tim the bitch boy beast and threatening my goddamn life. And yeah, I typed a lot of mean shit to nearly everybody. Being nice to them got me fucking lied to. Got... A bunch of fucking pretty words thrown in my face. No, these people, I know what they're going to do. I know what they're going to do because I've seen them do it before. I know how addicts act. That's why with Shannon Alvarado, the third fucking phone call, I was pretty sure she was on meth. No, she's an alcoholic, but just the same. Same thing with Teresa Orn. 
Teresa, I don't need to hear about your dead fucking husband. I don't. You've called me three times since Natalie died to tell me about your dead husband while you're fucking drunk. Knock it off, Teresa. Knock it off. I'm trying to get someone to see the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But only the slander against me is allowed. Only the slander against me is allowed on sword and scale. Meanwhile, Tim the Bitch Boy Beeson, with these claims that he's making, I looked at his emails from the period of time in between when the protection order happened and when she fucking disappeared. And the things that he was claiming, where are they? Where are those texts that he literally just claimed right there existed? Where Natalie is saying that I am going by her house. I wasn't fucking interested in stalking anybody. I needed her to call off the fucking dogs. <laughs>